All right, Donald Trump is doing a town hall event in Pennsylvania for seniors, but he's monologuing about everything but. He's talked about McDonald's. He has made up lies about cows. He has refused to talk about anything pertaining to seniors, and this comes only hours after he had a meltdown in Mar-a-Lago at Palm Beach, Florida. You know, we have seven days to go, exactly one week and no time to waste. Drop a like, subscribe, and let's start off with this clip of Donald Trump ranting about his Madison Square Garden rally, saying that it was a love fest, the same rally where they repeatedly made racist jokes. And it's funny because that comedian's racist comment about Puerto Rico wasn't even in the top five most racist things said on stage that day. You can safely put the watermelon joke above that. You can safely put the joke about Kamala Harris being Mongolian that Tucker Carlson made above that. And there are many other racist jokes, but let's jump into Donald Trump's clip. Take a look. In anything like what happened the other night, at Madison Square Garden, the love, the love, the love in that room, it was breathtaking. And you could have filled it many, many times with the people that were unable to get in. But politicians that have been doing this for a long time, 30 and 40 years, said there's never been an event so beautiful. It was like a love fest, an absolute love fest. And it was my honor to be involved. And hopefully, you know, they, they started to say, well, in 1939, the Nazis used Madison Square Garden. Well, it was an absolute love fest unless you are an immigrant, unless you are a Muslim, unless you are a Jewish person, especially unless you are a black person. I could go down the list, especially if you are a Puerto Rican, I mean, or a Latino in America, you can go down the list, but it was offensive to everybody except maybe straight white males, which was the target audience. I was there, and even before we went in, people were calling for the mass, bloody deportation of 21 million immigrants, no matter what what it costs, no matter what resources it takes. So yeah, you could say it was a love fest, but that is a lie. And you know what? Every, no, but can you imagine that? 1939, the Nazi, <laughs> they were, but, but how, how terrible to say, right? Because if you wanted to beat those allegations, maybe you could have held a normal rally. I mean, there's a reality where Donald Trump just rambled on about tariffs or something else that's really dumb, but instead, every single speaker went for a, a uniquely racist remark. Because, you know, they've used Madison Square Garden many times. Many people have used it, but nobody's ever had a crowd like that. And I tell you what, right now, nobody's ever had love like that. That was love in the room, and it was love for our country. Nobody's ever had a crowd like that, ever. I mean, this is the same as Donald Trump saying that January 6th had a bigger crowd than Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, which is incredibly offensive. Now, here is Donald Trump at his town hall a few hours later saying, quote, no president has done more for Puerto Rico than I have. He is genuinely just giving gift after gift to the Kamala Harris campaign, because how can you say this days after one of your speakers derided Puerto Rico, and then after you never apologized, you never said that it was a bad remark, Mark, you have the goal to say that no president has ever done more for it. I mean, it's insane to me. Puerto Rico, and I want you to know that Puerto Rico stands behind you, and Puerto Rico loves you. Thank you. Well, we love it. I, I know it very well, and we helped you through a lot of bad storms. I'll tell you, we had some really bad ones. Uh, you remember you were there when I brought the hospital ship against everyone's advice, and we got it in there and. Took care of a lot of people, but I think no president's done more for Puerto Rico than I have. So thank you. That's really nice of you. I mean, the bar that the presidents have to beat is basically throwing paper towel rolls. So I'm pretty sure every president in American history has beat Donald Trump when it comes to Puerto Rico. Now let's take a look at what President Biden was doing around the same time today. Folks, a lot at stake here. We're all investing in America agenda and because of what we did. Remember how we we're going to go into depression and all that stuff? Guess what? got the strongest economy in the world the whole damn world I wish Republicans would have a little bit of damn faith in the American economy. They act like we're on the verge of being a third world nation. I mean, Donald Trump says that explicitly when right now the American economy is doing great. And listen, I understand things are more expensive. They're more expensive all around the world and it hurts every single day. It shouldn't have been like that. But the reality is due to COVID, due to massive deficit spending, inflation did hit us. And now we have to just ease that problem, which Biden has done a great job at by every indicator, whether it's the stock market, real wage growth inflation lowering, we are beating every other country in the world. So I wish Republicans could have a little bit of patriotism, right? So in this clip, Donald Trump is saying America is like a garbage can, the opposite of patriotism. To the United States of America and dumped like we're a, like we're a garbage can 
like we're a garbage can. This dude never says a single good thing about America, just constant apocalyptic rhetoric trying to deride our country. Here is Donald Trump saying that guys like Mitch McConnell are terrible, which these are people that Donald Trump will have to work with someday. I mean, maybe not Mitch McConnell because he's close to retiring, but all of these Republicans that Donald Trump constantly puts down, how are you supposed to work with the other side? Oh, that's right. He won't. He'll unilaterally do it via executive order. It's an invasion into our country because you couldn't deal with Congress. You had guys like Mitch McConnell and others that were just absolutely terrible, I tell you. What is he talking about? Mitch McConnell saved his ass many times, especially from impeachment. He's just having a senior moment. Here's Trump saying that his Madison Square Garden rally, which was filled with a bunch of racist remarks, was incredible. We're going to find out in a few days. Because <laughs> we had something the other night that was incredible at Madison Square Garden. We could have filled it up many times. And let's compare that to Biden taking a quick jab at Trump for the Puerto Rico comments. Billion dollars in funding for my Inflation Reduction Act to help clean up and modernize ports in 27 different states and territories, from Pennsylvania, Georgia, Michigan, and beyond, including, yes, Puerto Rico. Well, I'd take that guy for a swim out there. Anyway. <laughs> Stenny's looking at me, don't get going, Joe. Don't get going, Joe. Slow up. He does have presidential immunity. <laughs> but this also is what an absolute savage. You know Republicans are going to be melting down over that one. Meanwhile, Donald Trump around the similar time, basically 20 minutes before that, was pushing election conspiracy theories. Now that's the difference. Biden is making a joke, an obvious joke that he laughs off and he says, oh, my advisor's going to be mad at that one. Meanwhile, Donald Trump is very genuinely trying to convince half the country to be in an alternate reality when it comes to our foundational institutions, one of our foundational rights, which is to vote. I want to start by saying it's going very well. Uh, there are some bad spots in Pennsylvania where uh, some serious things have been caught or in the process of being caught, but uh, the election itself is uh, going very well. We're leading, I believe, in all seven. If he's talking about the drop boxes that were being burned, this is the dude that did it, and he is a registered Republican. He's been going around burning drop boxes, trying to influence the results of the election, and instead of Donald Trump calling out this dude, he just says, vaguely, there are bad things going on, very bad things, which is that political doublespeak that he so often uses, where later on he can go back and say, oh, you guys know exactly what I was talking about. Here is Trump saying that Democrats are trying to destroy the country. So much for toning down the rhetoric. He's running on a campaign of demoralization and really a, can of, a campaign of destruction but really perhaps more than anything else it's a campaign of hate it's a campaign of absolute hate and you know I said yesterday that uh, she's a vessel and she is a vessel it's a very big powerful party with smart people I have to be smart but it's uh, vicious they're vicious and they're perhaps even trying to destroy our country. We viciously want more health care, more reproductive freedom. We viciously want an economy that isn't burdened by tariffs. Because who would want open borders where millions of people can flow in from prisons and from... Democrats don't. I can guarantee basically nobody watching this video wants open borders where criminals are flowing in, which number one, that is loaded language. He's implying that almost all immigrants are criminals. That is not true. Immigrants commit crimes at lower rates than native-born citizens because oftentimes they're trying to make a better life. But also, Democrats are the ones who want a secure border more so than Republicans right now. I can cite Lankford's bill, but I just want to broadly say I'm sure everybody watching this wants people to come through in a safe manner, in a legal manner, and for it to not take 10 years because when it takes 10 years then people do what we see now let's streamline the process everybody can agree from gangs gangs the worst gang members anywhere in the world who would want this for our country who would want uh, all of these transgender operations all over the place like at what a crazy pivot from immigration to transgender operations he is just trying to sow fear and it's so obvious he's getting worse at it which i'll show you in a second this clip comparing Donald Trump in 2016 to Donald Trump in 2024. Here is Trump saying that Michelle Obama is very nasty. I mean, he's been saying lately that she's angry and nasty. I don't, I, I've never seen Michelle Obama loose or cool, not once. When I met with Obama, 
His wife was very nasty to me the other day. Oh, I, that was not nice. She was very nasty. She said nasty things. I was always, I was always very, I was uh, always very respectful of her. Keep in mind, I'm pretty sure in the crowd I just heard someone say Big Mike, which is the Republican transphobic stereotype that they use about Michelle Obama, the conspiracy theory that she's actually a transgender woman. I don't, it's, it's disgusting, racist, transphobic stuff, but I swear I just heard someone at Trump's event say that. I was always very, I was uh, always very, I was always, I was always very, I was uh, always very respectful of her, but she, she got up there, which shows you how, how nervous they are about what's happening. But she was nasty two days ago. She got up and said some bad things she shouldn't have said. Were the nervous ones? Trump is the one who constantly puts down Democrats for using celebrities with name recognition like Eminem or Beyonce, but then holds a desperate ass event where he has Hulk Hogan. He has certain comedians. He goes on Joe Rogan the day before. He is the definition of desperate at this point. I want to show you one final clip contrasting Donald Trump speaking in 2015, June of 2015, versus his speech today. The difference is jarring. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. But I speak to boys. Some, I assume, are good people. Let's listen to him today. And she got innocent girls like Jocelyn tortured and killed. Anyone who knowingly sets loose these monsters into our country has absolutely no right to be running for office, let alone the office of president. No right. Yeah, these last nine years have not gone well for Donald Trump in terms of aging. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Drop a like, subscribe, have a great rest of your day, and peace out.